Welcome to Slow Fish in Scotland. So I've got some dishes here from the Ark of Taste in Scotland and what I've noticed about the fish elements on the Ark of Taste across the world is that they're not necessarily all about species, they can often be about the skills and the cultures and the traditions associated with preserving fish that are very much appropriate to the different country. And in the Nordic countries and the Northern Europe, curing and smoking and salting is very much part of that process because when you get fish they're very very perishable so you have to think of ways to preserve that glut as soon as you land it and these are classic examples that we have here with us today and the idea of curing your fish and smoking your fish goes back centuries and we're going to start here with this one now this is Shetland air dried cod or ling and you can hear this is hard stuff <laughs> this is totally dried and this this will keep a year like this now there's a wetter version um a wet salt cod which takes less time to hydrate and has a shorter storage time but this has a great shelf life as you can imagine and we're going to use this today and this has been prepared this way for a thousand years um, and in fact it was known throughout the world um, the early settlers on these northern isles were amazing shipbuilders so they would go out in strong rough seas and they would pack the fish and salt it um, and then come back with a big harvest and then air dry it in the Shetland winds which uh, was a pretty hardy stuff I can tell you um, and in fact right across Europe they were famed for what was known as the Shetland cure so it really was famous and highly respected. So as I say, there is a wet cure version as well, which is a, a little quicker to cook, but equally delicious. And here we have got the Othmiti Smokies. Now these are smoked haddock. They are gutted with the bone in, and you can see that they have a little bit of string there, dark from the smoke, and they're hung up over racks in a barrel with hot smoke, peat smoked and beautiful. And these are delicious. Now these are, because they're hot smoke, they're ready to eat now. And it's, it's, it's quite a mild salt cure they have. So they're, they're not over salty and they're delicious just as they are. Straight out of the barrel or cold on a picnic or my favourite is just to warm them through again in a saucepan with, um, or maybe a wok with a little bit of milk just to steam them up to get them back up to warm as if they're freshly smoked again and they're really delicious. But they're also great in patties and pies. Really tasty. Now, like all these fish, there are pretenders out there, so make sure you get the real deal and not something that's just been uh, passed through some smoky flavoured liquid. It's got to be the real deal for your enjoyment and for the arc of taste. Here we've got Finn and Haddie. Now this is also haddock, as is that, and you can see the lovely shape of the fish here. It's been um, salted, dried off a little overnight, and then had a light smoke. And this light cold smoke means that it's still a raw fish. Again, gutted, whole, head off, bone in. And there are pretenders out there. There are various boneless fillets of haddock, um, undyed and lurid yellow traffic light ones that are called golden cutlets. And that is not what you want. Go for the real deal. Find your good fishmonger that will source you thin and haddy. And these are both traditional in the northeast. And the Finn and the Haddie is particularly associated with a soup called Cullen Skink, a wee village on the north coast of Scotland um, in Bamshire. And uh, it's a delicious soup which I've got today. So that's another delicious fish. You can also have it poached in milk, uh, served with without a poached egg on top for a fantastic breakfast in Scotland. Um, and if you like kedgeree or fish pie, it's great for that as well. But Cook it first in milk and then you can take the bones out because they'll just lift out beautifully. And that's what we have here. There's also um, a salted herring on the Ark of Taste in Scotland. And the herring were known as the silver darlings. And the fisherwomen would follow the shoals up the whole coast of Scotland, working their fingers quite literally to the bone and salting these herring. And they were famous and exported across the world as well. And again, delicious. Um, they need a little bit of um, uh, soaking and then they can be pan fried with breadcrumbs and they're delicious. So really lovely. Um, if you're watching your salt and tea, you maybe wouldn't want them every single day in life, but they are delicious. Now we've also got a little guy here, little snail. 
And he's not just here because of the slow food emblem. He's also there because Scotland's art of taste is the proud border of the Barra snail. So what is the Barra snail? Well, on Barra, there is an ancient tradition dating back from the sixth century of monasteries, monks up the West Coast, beginnings of Christianity. And in that, those days, the Catholicism had fasting days, meatless days, but the snail was classed as a fish. So even on a fasting day, you could eat snails. And on Barra today, there are no predators, no um, fertilizers, no, no contaminants, and you get pure, beautiful snails by the thousands. And so the Barra snail has that history and it has that terroir from the macker of Barra, completely unpolluted. Now, I don't have snails with me today, although I tasted the Barra snails just the other day, cooked to perfection by Fred Burkmiller. And I would dispatch you to Escargo Bleu and Fred, because he has the definitive knowledge on the Barra snails. So if you're interested in trying them, get in touch with Fred. I'm just going to give my hands a wash, a little bit fishy here. So what have I got for you today? Well, as I said, this is the Finn and Haddie, and what I would do with that every time is cull and skink. Now, the recipes for both the dishes I've made are on my website, scottishfoodguide.scot. And with the cullen skink, you poach your fish first of all and a little bit of milk, keep the milk, bone your fish, and keep your flaked fish, and then discard your bones into your compost. And then you want to take some uh, butter, I use a chive butter because it's what we, we grow in the garden, and sweat your leeks. Now, every, every region has their own version of a cullen skink. Some people add just white onion or some celery, but we've got mussel brillar leeks that are also on the Ark of Taste and they're delicious. And they have a mildy onion flavor. So it's really lovely for the cullen skink. Once they're sweated, add my potatoes and add a little bit of water just to cook the potatoes so they're fully cooked before adding in my flaked cooked fish and my lovely stock with my milk and then it's ready to go. So I've got some here. A real favourite in this house. And this will actually freeze, so you can make a batch and uh, have some for another day. And the leeks give it some lovely colour. So it's about 50-50 water and milk, the way I make it. And if you want to blend it, um, keep a little bit of the fish back so that you can um, have some for a garnish in the top. And don't forget, a swirl of cream is a must. And there we have our cullen skink. Really delicious. The smokies, as I said, I would just poach in milk. Really lovely the way they are. And here I have cooked some Shetland baked cod. Now, the Shetlanders, as I say, are famed for this. And you might see, if you look closely, the potatoes are rather an interesting colour as well. And uh, I can just about touch this. And the Shetland black potatoes are indigenous to the Shetland Isles. They're also on the Ark of Taste. And they have these lovely purpley veins going through them. So this dish has been made with this little guy here. So the first thing you do is soak it and you need to soak it in cold water for 48 hours and change the cold water every now and again when you're passing, say three or four times during the day. You don't have to get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> After a couple of days um, it's ready to cook. Change the water one more time, bring it up to the boil and cook it for about 15 minutes and then it'll flake beautifully. It's boneless, but do check. With any fish, always do check. And flake it up. Then, in here, we have got layers of Shetland black potato, peeled and sliced finely, with some of my mussel brillique, and pepper. There's no added salt in any of these for very good reason. Um, pepper, and um, then another layer of potatoes and your salt cod in between. A couple of bay leaves is rather nice if you have them. And then you pour over a lovely mix of whole milk and cream. 
and let it cook for 45 minutes until you can put a spear through your potatoes, they're nice and soft. And this also will reheat beautifully. Sometimes these dishes are even more delicious when you reheat them. And it's a lovely way of serving the, the salted cod or the salted ling, really delicious and very traditional in Shetland. That's the way they would serve it. So I've given you a little bit of a trip around our seafood that is on the Ark of Taste in Scotland. Uh, the recipes are on Scottish Food Guide and there will be more of these sh video shorts about other foods on the Ark of Taste.